Hi guys, so just a quick video really and it's just some thoughts on the RX10 Mark IV from Sony I've owned this camera now from October when it was first released I was lucky enough to get one of the first ones into the country uh, possibly even the first one in the country I had it around about a week or so before anybody else and about two weeks before America got it um, which obviously upset a few people um, I love them, love it, absolutely brilliant piece of kit. There are a few downsides, like on anything, nothing's perfect. And I'm just going to talk about the replacement, so the the Sony RX10 Mark V, because it's going to come at some point. And the fa <clears throat> sorry, the fact that it, it has 24 to 600 mil f4, so f2.4 to f4. Um, a really really use, uh, sort of useful uh, range but as we're always greedy maybe on the next one maybe we could get 24 to 800 millimeters I don't know or even a thousand millimeters but it's not going to stay at f4 so for, probably from I reckon 600 mil to 800 or a thousand mil it may drop to um, f6.3 or f5.6 something like that if they can do it um, or go the other way maybe have a 14 to 600 millimeters, so super wide, um, wide angle, wide open. From say 14 or even even 20 would have been you know a little bit wider, but then distortion comes into play. Uh, you know, so that a, I can understand how Sony have built this camera. They have basically taken a sensor and worked out basically the perfect setup for it, and people. I've, well, I've actually read quite a few times that the the most thing people seem to want is a bigger sensor in this camera and I think if you put a bigger sensor in the camera one the range of the lens is not going to be the same it's going to be shorter um, but then you could have more megapixels means you could crop in um, but then also you know you're looking at probably uh, not quite as wide angle or a bigger lens. So, if you have ever seen a 600 millimeter f/4 prime lens, it's enormous. So, if you were to put anywhere near a full frame or even APS-C size sensor, the the lens is going to get quite a bit bigger to get the 600 millimeter uh, range and keep a a fast aperture. So, there's a lot involved. I know I can understand how Sony have done this. They've kind of got the best of everything and managed to put it all into one package and they've worked it out very well so the lens is very distortion free, it's extremely sharp it's very fast um, compared to anything else out there really and uh, the shots I've got from it which you guys can see from any of the other videos and I know some people have seen all my videos anyway um, you can see when this camera is used properly and I've seen a lot of friends who own this camera as well they're getting some amazing shots and you know the only downside is that one inch sensor does suffer from noise once the light starts to go but you can shoot up to ISO 1000 with a little bit of noise reduction later and you can still get some quite good shots I generally do keep it at ISO 100 just to keep the uh, the noise in check as, as much as possible um, so that one inch sensor is well probably the best one inch sensor out there um, but it's a case of what will they do to that sensor or will they have a new one um, you know will they squeeze a few more megapixels which you don't really need 20 megapixels is absolutely great on this camera um, you know they may even reduce it maybe they'll drop it, drop it down to 16 or something like that to help with the the, um, the noise it's a, you know, it's a possibility um, the 24 frames per second is one hell of a piece of um, <laughs> engineering to get it to do that um, and I have used it quite a bit, but actually quite often I actually turn it down to medium sort of speed, so it's probably doing about 16-ish frames per second, something like that. Um, I haven't actually looked to see what it will actually do when you drop it down to medium, but um, it's a lot slower. And actually quite often just single shot, because if when you're shooting at 24 frames a second, this is it's another downside, is if you you know do a lot of, you know if you are getting close to the 250 50 shot limit on this buffer, you're going to have to wait quite a while before you can do a lot more but it will still take pictures but a lot slower but the other 
real frustrating bit is the video. You can, if you've got your buffer full, you've got to wait for that to clear to start video. Um, so on an air show recently, I started actually going to single shot and continuous focus and just pushing it manually. So not doing high speed bursts or anything like that. Um, just taking picture after picture with a single shot, um, which worked actually really well because I could just as soon as I wanted to do a video, I just pushed the uh, video button and it was straight into the video. So there's work workarounds, and it's just about technique really. You know, just learning what the camera is capable of and 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 not. Um, I do actually believe the autofocus speeds of 0.03 seconds is actually right. It is ridiculously quick. Um, if you have one, actually just go to 600 millimeters and aim it at the floor within its 92 centimeter minimum um, and then aim it at a building miles away and just push the focus button and it'll be on that building so quick it's unbelievable I'm really really impressed with that and it locks onto things all over the place and it's really really handy for wildlife and things like that and it's it's just mad yes it does have a little moment of random focusing um, like anything does you know not everything's perfect um, but very rarely um, the other thing is battery life so when they bring the next one out I'm sure they're going to go to the same battery that is in the A7R3, A9 and A A7 III because that just makes sense and actually when you look at the grip size there is enough room there to probably re-engineer it slightly differently to get that bigger battery in all depends on the internals I guess but you know um, 4k video is amazing on the camera and 100 frames a second which in the UK we're using PAL so it would be 100 frames in, in, in the UK or 120 if you're in the US uh, and elsewhere um, really really good quality video uh, even sh you know up in the ISO as well it works really well and then you get on to the slow motion stuff or the high frame rate uh, bit of kit and 250 and 500 frames a second the ones I use most in fact it's mostly 500 frames per second and I love it, it's so interesting to see stuff that's been slowed down and uh, you know it's been um, it's been uh, you know slowed down so much that actually you can see things you can't see with the naked eye because it's happened so quickly that you've missed you know what's happened basically and you suddenly see oh, hell, I didn't even see it, you know the dust in the air or something like that, I didn't even see that um, but uh, you know um, the thousand frames per second a lot of people said it's useless well that's untrue if you look on my uh, channel and look at the bumblebee on the yellow flower and that's shot at a thousand frames per second and that was high, you, you, with slow motion you need a lot of light especially at a thousand frames per second so a bright sunny day is ideal um, don't bother doing it indoors because the light's not there and if you've got bad cheap LEDs you get flickering and banding and god knows what so you need to be outside on a bright sunny day uh, making the most of uh, making the most of that so you know it's um, you know it it does work and, and it upscales to HD it's not HD when it's doing those sort of frame rates um, but uh, you know it's it was increased up to a seven second limit um, from the four second limit for the previous camera so I'm wondering if they're gonna, I don't want any more time, the, time, the seven seconds is a long time for, especially for slow motion um, I'm just wondering if they'll even increase it to 2000 frames per second have that extra bit of speed in there um, or will they improve the quality of the slow motion that would be great, I mean it's, it's a brilliant thing but you've got to be so accurate with it and the fact that you can do fully manual uh, high frame rate or slow motion videos as well which is great um, where obviously you need plenty of light if you're shutting down the, the aperture a bit to get a bit more depth etc etc um, but uh, you know it's it's one hell of a bit of kit the 315 phase auto tech sorry phase autofocus points um, phase detection and contrast uh, work really really well 65% of the sensor uh, very rarely do I ever branch out of that and actually it surprised me how well that works um, like I said the, the range of the lens is 24 to 600 and f2.4 to 4 um, and 
maybe in the you know Mark V it, it could be increased. Um, a 24 sometimes it's not quite wide enough, but it's so easy to stitch nowadays that I quite often do, you know, a few shots just to stitch it together so it's slightly wider. Um, the 600 mil could be an 800 or a thousand would be nice, and you know, but you've got to be a little bit careful on lens sizes and and I know distortion and things like that. So that I know why they put 600 mil, um, but it's just a case of as technology moves on, will they be able to do it? Um, the steady shot works really well. I do notice though that there is a slight lag when you push your finger onto the um, shutter button to start autofocus. It takes, it feels like half a second, but it's probably not nowhere near half a second for the actual stabilization to spin up and actually start stabilizing the image. Uh, once it's on, it's absolutely fine, it's brilliant, and it works really, really well. Um, and no issues at all. So I'd imagine hopefully they may either go into sensor stabilization on the next body. I don't know if at a 600 millimeter lens does a lens uh, stabilization rather than sensor stabilization work better maybe maybe that's why I've done it or is it cheaper I don't know um, but you know the image quality straight out of the box generally is really really good um, so on the Mark V I would definitely love to see bigger battery a bit more range if possible um, the slow motion um, capabilities improved or bettered uh, with a bit more, even more frame rate would be really cool. Um, definitely a faster card readout, so it can clear that, clear the buffer. Sometimes when you're when you've done a big burst, it takes seems to take forever to to clear that buffer onto the card. And I'm using the fast fast cards, um, so an improvement on there. So it's a bit like the Sony A7R2 that was something like 400 megabits per second, where the A7R3 is now five gigabits per second. It's loads faster, and it really makes a difference. So I think. On the RX10 Mark V, when they bring it out, hopefully they'll, you know, do do that bit as well. Um, I would say battery life be improved, that'd be great. But then it's not a real drama carrying a couple of batteries in your pocket. When I went to uh, the War and Peace show recently, um, I had three batteries in the bag. Uh, well, sorry, one in the camera and two in the bag. And I I I used all three, yes, but I didn't actually. I I, I f almost flattened two, um, but I changed them at 10%. And I put the third battery in and I still had 70% uh, left when I went home and I was there for around about 8 hours. So it didn't do too bad um, and I took took about 1600 shots plus um, loads of video, especially slow motion and, and some 4K. Um, the War and Peace show video is on, is on my channel so have a, have a look at that one. Um, but yeah, so it's, uh, one of the other biggest gripes, which, which is not, it's annoying but it's, it's a workaround. Um, and the sort of say godsend is the the speed of the autofocus really helps you because if you're using a DSLR or a mirrorless um, full frame camera or, or an A6300 or something like that, where you've got a 70 to 200 millimeter lens on or a 150 to 600 mm lens on, you can autofocus and back out or zoom in whilst you've got your finger down on the um, on the shutter button while it's autofocusing. And it will stay doing that, and it's it's no trouble at all. With the RX10 Mark IV, once you've got your finger on the shutter button and it's auto focusing or tracking or whatever you want it to do, you can't zoom in or out. There is no movement whatsoever. So you have to let off, back out, and put your finger back on the shutter, or zoom in and then do, you know put your finger back on the shutter. Luckily, it's focusing so quickly. I very rarely missed a shot, but it allows you. It would be nice if you could do. Um, you know, zoom in and out. Um, that would be really good. The um, the way I wish it was like is if anybody can remember the Sony F828. That was a kind of bridge camera stroke hybrid type thing um, where actually there was a I think it was an 18 to 200 mil lens, roughly something like that, um, and. It was like a, a 70 to 200 lens. You you know you zoom in and out manually, had manual focus. It was all worked really well, um, and uh, that was really nice to use. So you could I mean, the autofocus was obviously a lot slower back then, but you could zoom in and out, and it, it had a a nice feeling. And also the fact you didn't have a, t a tilty screen or anything like that. You actually rotated the body on the 
on on the uh, on the back of the on the back of the lens there it actually rotated which was really quite useful um so yes if we could we could do that that'd be cool uh yeah so iso improvements uh, noise reduction and everything like that would be would be helpful even though if you if you use the thing in in the mark 4 in good light it's unbelievable it's really really good no issues of whatsoever it's when you get to dull dull cloudy days where there's no sunshine and you have to crank the iso up or high iso so once you get over a sort of four five six hundred and then to a thousand you then need to actually apply some noise reduction later on i always turn it off in the camera because it slows the thing down uh what else um i think that's really it i mean the improvements would would you know just make the camera that much better and even though it's amazing already um, there's a few things since using it since october last year um, you know, it'd be it'll be you know a, a greatly improved product. Um, also, a flippy out screen, so a proper m rotating screen, so you can actually use it for vlogging. Um, so you can actually see yourself when you're if you're talking to the camera. And the other thing would be ideally two card slots, but it's not the end of the world. It's only got one. Um, and uh, also the fact that. The viewfinder, or the EVF, is quite small. So where I'm used to the um, A7R3's viewfinder. It's quite, it's quite robust. It's got no soft softness around the edge or anything like that. So when you actually look, and it's also a smaller, it is a smaller EVF, but it just doesn't feel as comfortable when you're when you're shooting. It's absolutely fine, um, but when you've been using obviously the, the A7R3, it feels a little bit different. And uh, you know I've, I've got used to both, but it, it is always noticeable. Um, so looking at the specs on, there we go. So it's still got obviously the RX10 Mark IV, still got the NP FW50, and I think it's a Z battery now, isn't it, with the um, A7R3 and A9 and A7 III. So it'd love to have that, um, you know, replaced with that. That should be cool. Um, USB and everything works really well. I've stuck microphones in it and things like that, which work quite well. The exposure modes are more than enough. The reason I bought the um, RX10 Mark IV originally was because I had got a compact in the past, just as a day out camera, when you don't want to carry all your gear around with you. With you. And um, it was the original RX100 actually, and I felt restricted. Like when you've got a certain amount of knowledge. And you want to be able to get everything out of the pits of equipment you're using, and you can't. It was quite frustrating. Um, yes, it still took good photos, and yes, it was you know it was, it was easy to work with, and, and yes and that, and um, you know. But it it frustrated me because I couldn't do what I wanted to do. The RX10 Mark IV is basically a pro level camera, and all but an all in one. So you've got all of all of the functionality. And all of the special bits that you really, really need or want, that you know my A7R3 can do or whatever, plus some extras. So you know the fact that I can do one thirty-two thousandth of a second shutter speed. Um, obviously, all the slow motion video, which I'd love if they stuck on the next A7R um, range or A7R4, for example, that'd be amazing. You know, full frame slow motion, that'd be nuts. Um, you know, so you know, the panorama works quite well. Scene selection, don't really use that. Uh, shutter speed priority never really use that but I do use manual and that's it really the movie modes not really touch them I just push record and then I end up editing stuff later um, flash metering everything not really use flash on this it's more of just a day out camera and I've been using it for video and you know wildlife shooting and things like that so stills but not really use the flash if I do use a flash it'll either be um, manual wireless or the um, HVLL 60am flash gun which I've got which works straight fine on it and I just stick there manual on it anyway and uh, work with that so I don't really mess around with the settings too much um, I did buy it would be nice to get a charger in the box but I did buy a double charger for it and another battery uh, well another few batteries actually sorry um, so charging up batteries and having spares is really good um, the three-inch touchscreen on the back—I never really use it, um, but now I've got the A7R3. 
I tend to actually uh, especially for the focus points for a video so when you're just doing bits and pieces and you want to move over or when you're doing spot focusing on certain things uh, in still so when you're doing photos that works really really nicely um, I just wish they would add in um, a little bit more sort of usability with the touch screen which I'm sure everyone thinks that um, the function button is really really good and you know having all the other buttons you can you know obviously modify and set as you want um, you know however you like them the function button is one of the biggest things so you've got up to I think it's 12 items in there um, that you can choose so I've got face recognition um, uh, which got stabilization on or off um, shutter type so um, mechanical auto and obviously silent and uh, one of the, the one I use the most and it, this is why people when the people moan about the the actual menus themselves I very rarely go into the menu so once you push the menu button I've, I've gone in there to change something that you know I've, I might change once a year or something you know something sort of that but the actual function button so you can go in and change you know my uh, HFR so the, the high frame rate slow motion video go in there change it for 250, 500, 1000 boom done um, my focus points go in there function button change my focus points and it's so quick and easy and that's, that's what I love about this camera it's so usable and once you've learnt where the buttons are how you set the, the thing up and actually just get on with using the camera it makes it that's what makes it so good <coughs> excuse me um, you know so that works really well um, it's just a few th a few tweaks really that you know I think the 5 could have um, so I'll recap quickly so the 5 I would like it this is my personal thoughts um, to have obviously the bigger battery um, a manual version of the lens so you can zoom in and out manually rather than electrically um, I can understand why it's electrical because obviously the videos and things like that it obviously helps um, but if there was an option that you could just spin it manually so it was obviously you know allowed you to do it whilst you're auto focusing it can auto focus on video at the same time so why can't it auto focus and do stills at the same time you know back in and out so I don't get that but it's something hopefully they can fix um, obviously it's remap the sensor a little bit more so hopefully either a new sensor or a slightly better improved sensor with better low light capabilities giving us a little bit better quality um, but that's still not the end of the world, it's still a very usable camera. Um, the um, improved HFR, so better quality or higher frame rates for slow motion, that would be a good one. And uh, just a bigger zoom lens if possible, I mean, you know, 24 to 800 or something. But I know I understand that they, they'll have to not be f4 because f4 would be quite large. Um, the lens would get bigger, so um, not necessarily longer, but more diameter. So obviously, having the f-stop f4 at 800 would have to be quite a bit bigger, um, or even at a thousand millimeters. Like you know, if it went to f6.3, that would make it a rather useful camera. Um, you know, so um, other than that, the only other thing I really would be quite good is if they could have a double buffer. So one was for video and one was for stills. So if we did have burst so if you did go oh, 24 frames a second and you just tracked a bird flying or something like that or a jet or, or whatever um, your buffer is now full but you'd like to quite like to go and do some video we can't do anything we literally sat there um, so unless you do what I did at the air show and just do single shots then you can swap to video not really a problem but if you do want to do a burst and then have to swap that that's an issue so if they did have two buffers one for video and one for um, the stills that would be an improvement um, and that's it really um, it does pretty much everything it needs to do and it's very very good at it um, I did find when you're shooting with flash though everything sort of slowed down there was no high frame rate burst with flash just punching away it's down to like four frames a second or something roughly when it's uh, when you've got a flash gun on top of it it won't do uh, but that's how the shutter work, the mechanical shutter is working. But obviously, when you're doing 24 frames a second, it's using um, electronic uh, shutters. So, anyway, guys, that's enough of me rambling. Um, if you've got any ideas on how you'd like the 
um, RX10 Mark V to be when it comes out because it's going to be at some point, it may not be this year, it may not be next year, I don't know but there's a few things that I think need addressing and it could make a, a, a lot better um, a lot better camera you know um, for example getting the, getting the photos onto the card faster that's another thing as well um, but everything else the camera is one hell of a piece of kit and, and it's dropping in price slightly there's a few iffy prices out there that I, I think they're grey imports I don't think they're um, you know in, in England anyway um, a few a few places there for sale and they're quite a few hundred quid cheaper but you know be, just be careful what you buy um, but yeah so and uh, maybe an even improved EVF would be good as well just out of thought um, but yeah um, if the camera stayed roughly the same size that would be ideal um, and still the same price I don't mind spending the money if it does what it says on the tin and um, the RX10 Mark IV is worth the 1800 quid originally it was it was priced at um, what it can do for the money is it blows everything else out of the water absolutely everything doesn't matter what what you want to do with it it seems to be able to get the shots um, as long as you know what you're doing as long as you understand the camera once you've learnt how to use it um, that's when you can get the most out of it and I still even today I still haven't got bored of using it and I still don't feel like I've conquered it as such I, I feel like it's still still up to date up to with today's cameras so it's not even even though it's almost a year old um, it's, it's not feeling slow it's not feeling like it needs an upgrade um, you know so but I'm wondering how long they will wait before they bring the 5 out because if you look at the RX, RX100 we're now at Mark 6 so and that's got quite a bit of the RX10 Mark 4's bits in it um, and some of the features and stuff so I imagine it's going to be a new one the RX10 Mark 5 coming at some point so uh, we should wait and see I guess but yeah leave a comment down so if you've got one if you have if you own one of these cameras um, leave a comment below anything you think that it needs or you'd like to see um, be interesting to see what what other people think actually um, you know so you know you know do you love the camera you know is there anything that really pisses you off about it um, you know or is there certain things you wish you you could do with it um, you know if or if you're stuck with anything so if you if you if you need my help if I can possibly advise you um, in the right direction if you've got an issue with the, the camera or you know learning something new about it um, just ask questions and I'll quite happily try and answer them and uh, I'll go from there but um, yeah it's definitely a it's still a cool camera it definitely works really really well Duh, and one more thing actually the flash it'd be nice if it did what the A6300 does and actually could bounce it off the ceiling so this, this one just pops up but if it had a bit more rotation so you could actually bounce it off the ceiling you could actually do a little bit of bounce with the flash sometimes just as a little fill-in um, if, you, you know, if you're out and about and you just want to do a family photo or something like that and you don't want to just go boom and you just want a bit of extra light to bounce off the ceiling it would be nice if you could um, you know obviously just pull it back a bit further which you can on uh, the A6300 and it's probably A6500 as well but the um, the weight around that is I just got a, um, a piece of card and shoved it at 45 degrees and it shot the shot the light off the ceiling and it did work so anyway guys um, like I say please um, uh, please uh, subscribe please um, click the notification bell and also um, just to say please ask questions or put some comments below see what you actually think are you thinking about buying an, an RX10 Mark IV um, what I've explained today is the kind of little gripes there, but you live with it. I mean, they're not, it's not causing you to take bad photos, it's just making you work, have some workarounds, and you know, you learn how to get the pictures. I mean, when we talked about film cameras years ago, we'd actually, the things you'd have to do to try and get the photo, like pre focus on th certain areas, you know, as something came into shot just to get the photo, you, you don't have to worry about that now. You just track something from left to right and it's in focus the whole lot you know that, that never used to be possible but um, you know so um, ask questions put some comments down anything you think the camera needs or could do with or could it be improved um, in any of your your thoughts um, and let us know so anyway guys I shall see you soon and uh, yeah don't forget to um, click the subscribe button okay cheers